Salmon Cave Archives! Knowing and doing are two different things. Welcome back to Airman Cave Archives. Tonight, I thought we'd take another look inside the short box. And basically, I've got a bunch of long boxes and different comic books that I've collected over the years. But these are the ones that have uh, financial as well as sentimental uh, value to them. So let's hear some of the stories behind the short box comics. And let's see. Boom, right out the gate. Uh, this is Adventure Comics, number 253. It or not, I... My mom actually was at a yard sale and uh, calls the house and says, Hey, I found a box with some comic books in it. Do you want me to grab them? I was like, yeah, I guess. You know, how much are they charging you? She's like, we'll cover price. And around that time, comic books were like 75 cents. And so that's what I was expecting to hear. And she says... Oh, they're 10 and 12 cents. I was like, uh, yeah, go ahead and grab them, please. And so this one is the first time that uh, Superboy and Robin get to meet up. And don't worry, I'm not going to tell you the story behind every single one of these because, good Lord, that would take forever. Oh, such a cool story. So if you'll notice on the back of this, there is a little comic book. And this is the big comic book. So, I used to go adventure hunting in my grandparents' attic, uh, the Nelsons, uh, Nellie and Cotton. And in one of the magazines, it was I think it was called I Magazine. Believe it or not, I... uh, back in the day, I think it was in the 60s. And this was actually in the magazine and dropped out. And so I grabbed it and thought nothing of it. Well, fast forward... It's the first appearance of, or full appearance, of Mary Jane from Spider-Man. And here I've got the little mini comic that goes along with it. My comic book shop guy uh, is very interested in getting it from me, but I told him, dude, I, I can't. It's got too much uh, sentimental value to it. it or not, oh, never thought in a million years I'd be able to get this, but I had sold uh, something and had some money come my way. And it's the first appearance of the red costume and Daredevil. So Daredevil number seven, the original uh, crimson or red costume originally had been in like kind of like a brownish black and uh, yellow costume. So, uh, hello, the Flintstones. First appearance of the Flintstones in comic books anyway. And this was kind of cool for me. Destroyer Duck. Believe it or not. It's the first appearance of Gru. Uh, it was a, he's kind of like a, a goofy Conan. And uh, not the comedian or talk show host, but the barbarian. And I actually got to meet the creator, Sergio, uh, whenever me and my little brother were at uh, WonderCon. And I don't know if anybody out there likes Valiant comic books. But I was a huge Valiant fan, still am. But this was the original Dr. Solar, and it's his first appearance in the red costume. And let's see, oh, coming up in the movie soon is the first appearance of Thanos. Believe it or not, uh, picked that one up from my local comic book shop guy. Sorry, Rob. And uh, whenever it wasn't that much before they started doing all the um, previews with uh, Thanos in them at the end credits on some of the Marvel movies. Oh, man. So again, WonderCon, um, Lobo. Now, this is the first African-American hero, not a superhero in the sense that you're thinking, but this was the first African-American hero. 
I was at WonderCon. Literally, there was 15 minutes left uh, in the show. And so I'm running around trying to find like last minute deals. And I remember uh, this one guy had a bunch of long boxes under a table that he hadn't sorted through yet. And so I went and found him and said, hey, dude, you know, do you mind? We're at the last day, last hour or last minute of the day. You know, can I go through real quick? And he's like, yeah, anything you find in there? He's like, uh, let's go 10 bucks. And I was like, all right, whatever. So I'm leaving through and boom. Lobo number one, not to be confused with Omega Man number three Lobo, which is a totally different character. But uh, yeah, that was kind of cool and an honor to be able to uh, grab up and put into the private collection. I'm trying to think, oh, speaking of Lobo, <laughs> there's Lobo, the Mega Man number three. Let's see. Oh, I'm so waiting for the, the Valiant movies to come out. Believe it or not, and it was kind of cool. WonderCon again, uh, reference, but uh, got to talk to the panel from Valiant folks and was asking them, hey, you know, when is, you know, the first uh, Valiant movie going to come out? And they said, oh, you know, it's going to be soon. Well, that was 2015. We're in 2018. Still waiting. There's, this is the first appearance, full appearance of um, Bloodshot. So, oh, man, cool one for me. And again, this was from my local uh, shop guy. Thanks, Rob. I tell you what, you really helped out my collection. But uh, Spawn, Capital Collection, which is funny because it's Capital City Comics. Believe it or not. But this is the uh, trade paperback that actually has, I think it's the first four issues of Spawn. But this is the limited one that's actually autographed by Todd McFarlane. So that was kind of neat to be able to pull it off the wall and add it to the private collection. Let's see. Oh, let's get into the extra stack. Rob would shoot me if he saw me handling the books like this. There's some of the ones with the good story behind them. My wife got that one. Oh, this is cool. So, was it Atomic Comics? It's Atomic Comics out of, I think it's uh, Hampton, Virginia. I was in the store leafing through and looking for something, something different. Because that's a big thing. I always look for odds and ends that uh, people may have passed up or not thought about. But uh, come across this issue. Believe it or not, I... Turtle Mania, number one special. There were some autograph versions of it, but there were not many of these. And it's kind of, it's like an ash can. It's a little comic book. But the cool thing was, after I saw it and started reading the back of it, it was done at a comic shop in West Palm Beach, Florida that I had gone to whenever I was a kid, but that was awesome. The staples are freaking perfect. There's no uh, rusting to them or anything like that. So uh, that was a pretty neat one to be able to add to the personal collection. Uh, just before I deployed and went off for a year to uh, Qatar and Afghanistan, so my family celebrated all the holidays that I would be missing. And I'm going through all the uh, Thanksgiving time, and then we get to Christmas time and birthday. And I'm going through gifts, and this one my wife got for me with a surprise. Believe it or not, I... Walking Dead number one. And she did really well because uh, she bought it low, we'll just say that. And beautiful copy. And the cool thing is it's the black lettering mature reader, not the white one. But, oh, man, I saw that. I was like, holy crap, that's so cool. But there's a bunch of different ones that, you know, I always would find at uh, different flea markets or thrift shops and stuff like that. And that's the biggest thing if you are a comic book collector is leave no long box unturned because you're going to find something one of those days that you just go oh my gosh and you have to contain your excitement do your poker face because yeah you're going to see that book and be like oh my gosh that's the one that i was looking for now you know about some of my uh, short blocks uh, findings uh, go out and do yourself a favor and go through some long boxes and who knows you might find something thanks for stopping by and see you again Cave Archives! Knowing and doing are two different things.